Imagine a vibrant discussion between people that includes both openness and critical thought in the pursuit of truth. The Purchasing Truth Podcast is an experience, a journey, an exploration of the impact that negative messages in politics and the media have on our families, community, society, and nation. Join your hosts, Bill Sterling and Tom Hazard, to discover new concepts and language strategies that will reveal effective ways of establishing truth. This podcast series will tackle current events, leadership challenges, healthcare confusion, integrity in business, and many other areas that affect us all. Gain clarity and understanding of the various truth perspectives. Welcome to Purchasing Truth. Welcome back to Purchasing Truth. I'm Tom Hazard, along with your host, Bill Sterling. And Bill, we have a very interesting thing happening in our country right now. Uh, a news story that's being blown up. I mean, really blown up. It, it's getting a ton of propagation, as we say. It is being shared and replayed and published by every media outlet. And that's of the radio host Phil Valentine, who's a conservative talk radio host. And he has been somebody who has downplayed the vaccine uh, and and really made fun of the vaccine, mocked the vaccine, you know, not have been a supporter of people getting the vaccine. And now he has COVID and very badly hospitalized in critical condition and now he's changed his tune and there's a great many interesting things to observe and talk about with this well i really appreciate uh, this topic tom because um, when we as communicators in in our modern world we're looking to get the message out of um, the things that we value, our brand recognition, our uh, our uh, our message, our uh, we want to find our fans. We want to build fan base. We want to in- increase our, our eyeballs online. We want to get the number of clicks that we need. Um, we need to um, uh, inspire and engage uh, people. So our advertisers stay close. Our um, our products move off the shelf. Uh, we're engaged in uh, really powerful messaging. And, and this, this show, as it takes various different topics, both in business and politics, about how things are messaged. So here, the media is, is promoting uh, messaging. And the messaging is around, here's a person that had this one point of view, the, uh, the, uh, the viewpoint about vaccines over here. And then um, they're 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 now promoting this other viewpoint. Now, you know, you know, a lot of times people uh, don't change their viewpoint unless they are facing or experiencing the crisis in front of them. That's really that's really hard you know, is that they got the crisis in front of them, then all of a sudden they're, um, you know, dealing with, you know, the crisis and stuff. It's, it's, um, whether it's business or politics, it's that impression, that loyalty, that connection that a person is looking for. Now we're watching the media taking and trying to find a foothold into the non-vax world. Here's somebody that promoted non-vaccination or choice of an individual over the public good. And now they're saying it's in the public good and it's a better choice to be on this side versus that side. And it is, um, it is, it comes down to what does it take to admit that your belief is wrong? What does it take to uh, change uh, your narrative? And uh, instead of buying this hamburger, buy this hamburger. Instead of buying this product, buy this product. Instead of being a vaxxer to a non-vaxxer, back to a vaxxer. I mean, oh my gosh, it's uh, it, 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 we are we are peculiar creatures, and it's and we are 
we do run by our vocabulary. Um, it's our, you know, it's the, it's the software that runs a human being is the words that come out of our mouth. And we've got to remember that that's how we work. You know, if you've got something coming out of your mouth, your body is in tune or tuning to the thing that you're saying. And it's a little, it's a little unsettling. Okay. So with all that monologue that I just give, you know, it's a very funny monologue, but it's also in business and politics, we've also got to get used to how the messages come in. And there's so much to um, look at the media communication around this that, uh, you know, it's, it's a great idea to talk about it. So, so uh, what, what is some of the things that you've come across regarding Phil Valentine and some of the things that media has done to, to cover and make, a, make this, this person's change of heart stick? Well, and it's the change of heart that is just so rare still regrettably in in america today that is why this is newsworthy and maybe newsworthy is an understatement i mean this thing is being blown up and we've included just a video of just one interview with phil's brother because phil is in the hospital and he's only able to communicate in a very limited capacity with right. his family but right. his brother phil is bringing his message out to the world and being interviewed by everybody. And, and, you know, uh, the video that we show, I, I don't think the reporter did a really skillful job in interviewing him, but at the same time, you know, Phil's brother did come out and, and say some very specific things because the reporter tried to pin him down because Phil had mocked, the vaccine he had mocked it and and really uh lined it up with big government being bad and you know he made a parody of the beatles song tax man calling it vax man so anyway there, there's a lot of things that if you just look into phil valentine a little bit you'll see you know what he said about the vaccine he was no proponent of taking the vaccine he was very much in this camp of Right. Um, I'm healthy. Why do I need to take it type of thing? And he's a 61 year old American. So he's not. No, he's right in that super that young. He's in one of the higher risk groups just by his age. Right. But I'm healthy. Why do I need to take it? I think he felt he was, you know, somewhat bulletproof or dare I say immune to this, you know, virus without having the vaccine. And now he's got pneumonia in the hospital. And, and it, apparently, if you trust what his brother says, he is trying to let his audience in the world know this is serious. Get the vaccine. His tune has changed. And so his brother, while faced with, well, you know, you're, you know, Phil has done this and done that. Is it? Yes, he has. And and he regrets what I mean, he's basically saying he his brother that Phil Valentine regrets what he said in the past. He's urging everybody to get the vaccine that you don't need to get as sick as he has. And so, you know, I think trying to do the right thing, he's finally seen that maybe the earth is round and it's not flat, so to speak. Yeah, I and I appreciate that because see, when when somebody's invested into um and has, has done a thing called made a decision for. When I cast a vote for a person, it's, um, and if a voter um, has spent some time to says, this is the person that best represents my values. This is the party that best represents my values. This other party from the things I've heard, because as I put air quotes in the, uh, air here, the things I've heard, there's messages if I was visiting from, you know, another planet, uh, listening to about the things that are being said about the Democrats, I said, gosh, who would, who'd really vote for that party? I mean, it seems like they don't want uh, people to be independent, and they don't want people to have their freedom and choices, and, and they want people to be socialism and communism, and and the, uh, in other words, 
the people's belief structure has that name has had a bunch of things tied to it that aren't really fully true. There's elements of it, but not really the full range of um, uh, really how the party really even governs fully. So um, the, the problem with the belief is, is that when it gets solidified or codified is that you don't want to change your belief. You don't want to re-examine it. And all the, all the messenger needs to do from media is keep pressing on the same button to keep you loyal, even if the button is not true or not fully true. Or only partially true. I mean, it doesn't take much to keep somebody going down the same railroad track that they're already going down. Um, and that's the thing that's really in trouble. I, I always call it like the, it's like the belief railroad switching station. And I'll, and I'll put a, we'll put a picture. I've, I just put a picture in our, our little chart for us to put in. It's literally like once a person's down this other track, it's hard to get them to switch back over to, wait a minute, what is the real destiny we need to go? Where is Where does this really go? Because if you're down this track, then you have to deny an insurrection. You have to deny, you know, that I was the person that was responsible that, that no, these people did this of their own free will. No, they did not because they were sent there with five direct messages from a stage, five. There were five different messages. This is combat. You need to be strong and you need to take it back. Uh, these people stole this thing from you, this like this. And there, all you need is a set of five simple messages from a stage. And because the person's belief structure has already been entrenched, stand back and you know st and stand by like oh my gosh the per that that's one of the it doesn't take much because the person's belief structure is already on the railroad track well i really appreciate the railroad track metaphor bill i think that's very helpful to understand how hard it is to move someone off their beliefs and you know you and i have talked about in, in past episodes, how, when is there going to be something, somebody famous enough, well-known enough who dies of COVID that people who are not getting the vaccine are, it, when's it going to be somebody meaningful enough to change people's minds, to change their beliefs and get them to take the vaccine. And I think there was kind of a, a hope with the way that how this event of Phil Valentine being critically ill in the hospital with COVID, there was a hope that, you know, maybe he's one that's on the way. Maybe, you know, he's not maybe the nationally known celebrity, but he certainly maybe has a lot of listeners, a lot of followers, and this might have a bigger impact. But I got to tell you, I did some research on him in advance of us recording this, and I can't find any hard data on how many listeners or followers he has yes. it was kind of it was shocking to me that i couldn't find anything now part of that is so many different publications have picked up the current story that right. literally the first you know seven eight pages of google search are all the same thing just in a different location yeah. And, 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 and just, just, just this moment, you and I in time, how hard is it to find truth when truth has already been purchased? Oh my I mean, gosh. It's, it's, it's the unsettling thing is what is truth been purchased by? It's been purchased by the, the Google algorithm regurgitating the same seven or 10 or three stories. And it's the same click. And you're going like, I can't, I can't get to how many pages of stuff it's, it's worse. I'm going to say, this is going to sound really bad and I'm going to date myself. It's worse 
than a stack of books in a library on a library shelf to find out what piece of information do I need from this shelf to actually find it. It's like, uh, I, you know, I almost want to give up on this. I don't have time to find that piece of information to validate or uh, not validate the, my point. So it's, it, it really, it really is a tough moment in the field of time for us because to get the railroad track or the railroad switching station, the little arm that pulls down, the track goes to the other side. It's got to, it's, it's that, whatever it is, it's got to have the weight and the strength to pull it over to this other thing. Now it doesn't have to be fully, it doesn't have to be a person like Rock Hudson did for AIDS. I mean, Rock Hudson did more to help AIDS research move it back to a scientific narrative, get it out of the political narrative um, and moved it right over because the, the, the public um, care, love, loyalty, brand impression of Rock Hudson was this macho guy being taken out by this disease. Yeah, and I think similarly, Magic Johnson, you know, was forced to retire because he got it too. I mean, these were really iconic figures in America. Right. And it changed people's perspectives. So you would think, Bill, that at some point here, somebody is going to get it. And, you know, I, I, I and die from COVID-19. That's a, a big name, uh, you know, and sometimes I start to believe that. And other times I'm thinking, you know what? All of the really famous people and all the representatives from these states and all the governors and all the famous people have all been vaccinated. They just don't talk about being vaccinated. They're being real right. quiet about it. Right. Because because so the, and that and that's the hard part about it, because it moved. Um, it was a rosy colored glasses message that the last administration put forth. It's not that big, it's just a cold. Uh, it's just as bad as the cold. It's not you know, that big, it's gonna go away. And uh, let's cross our fingers and hope for the best science instead of, oh, wait a minute, the numbers aren't really looking very good. And this is what we're discovering in Italy. It's like ignore science, ignore numbers, ignore science and, and that kind of stuff. And, um, our, our brain wants to amplify our current beliefs. It doesn't want to change the belief. So if I already believe that the quote air quotes, the numbers of COVID things are being escalated in a, in a hospital just to get the extra $600 from the government or whatever that, that payoff thing is. If I have that belief that there's an inflative number, I'm going to make that big instead of going like that may have happened, but it's not the thing. It's not the thing. The thing is, is that we have this many people on ventilators. Could you just take a picture of all those people? Oh, that's right. We can't. We've got to do the privacy thing. We can't. We can't explode. <laughs> can't explode people. The images of hot, you know, hospital things because every hospital is not inundated with it all the time. It comes in waves. It comes in different moments <laughs> in different locations because of an outbreak in that area it's we're having a hard time believing it's true because when we look for evidence it the, the evidence is over there in other these different places and then the numbers just keep climbing because we're not doing it and it's and it's really really a very tough time for us to find and to believe truth because we are so saturated by um, information through our phone through our computers you know through the internet and it's really, really hard. Well, and it and situation. that information is in alignment with our biases, with our beliefs too, because Facebook knows what stories we're reading, what things we like, what things we dislike, what things we snooze for thirty days, and so it keeps feeding you more of that messaging that reinforces your belief. So that's it's so hard that that's why it's so important that, and it's kind of sad to say this, but 
it's really important that somebody incredibly well known, respected, and liked gets this and dies. Otherwise, it the fear is no one is going to believe it until it happens to them. It really has come down to um, my self worth is invested in a belief. My identity is in bless, uh, invested in a belief. Uh, because I'm on this one side, I can't. I can't be um, skeptical and doubtful of what my side is saying. And that is the thing that's um, unsettling. Even if Sean Hannity comes and says, um, hey, take the vaccine. I've already been a vaccine person. And, and, he, and he stepped into it. The, the, the challenge is that there's been all these micro messages all the way up to that, or even direct messages about how to rile up the viewership and you know just like turning a lamp on outside of the porch at night all the flies will and all the bugs will start flying to the light and they're getting zapped when they get there so it's it's a little it's a little it's a little difficult that our beliefs we think that we're able to discern something and, and you and I, as business owners, we, we keep trying to change our belief. Think again, think again, change this belief, change this behavior, change this action, delegate this thing, stop doing that thing, delegate that thing, because that thing, you can't do that thing and do this other thing you need to do to grow your business because you need to change your belief. We're literally, as an entrepreneur, trying to switch the switching station to go over there and delegate the stuff over here because that's something someone else has got to do. You know, and, and it's, it's very, very hard for our brain to do because we're used to doing, human beings are used to doing things that are familiar that match our identity that match our self-worth, that match our habit pattern. And to be optimistic about this, sometimes it doesn't take much to switch over a belief. One sentence being done in a new time. Have you ever had one sentence come in and then you just change? Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I can do that. You know, I mean, you and I've spent a lot of times together. Sometimes you go, Bill, that sense that you gave me for the email really made a difference. My client turned around instantly. How the hell did you do that sentence? Well, I put it in alignment with, you know, empathy and compassion for that person. And then all of a sudden the person just, they remained your client and they didn't go looking elsewhere. They, they didn't do something they did that would have been worse for them because they followed somebody else's bad advice. So it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. Our, our minds are really interesting. <laughs> our minds are interesting. And I, I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, these polarized, you know, camps that America is really divided into have a hard time understanding each other. And, you know, when I, when I thought about Phil Valentine and this really, the, the fact that he only changed his tune when he is facing the biggest health crisis of his life, he is facing death. Yes. And he changed his mind. And it, it reminded me of this movie, uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still, which is right. kind of a, you know, science fiction, apocalyptic movie. And if you haven't seen it, that's, it's a pretty good movie. I would check it out. But yeah. there's this, this important scene where one of the characters is talking about human nature, human beings, and only when we're on the brink do we find the will to change. And that's exactly where Phil, you know, Phil Valentine is right now. That's where he's been. He's on the brink of death. He realizes, wow, I may not make it. And he, through his brother, is communicating to the world, don't be like me. But I fear that 
number one, he may not be well known enough. Enough people may not really um, regard him as an authority that it may not have as big an effect, even though media is blowing this thing up. I mean, you, you, like I said, you can't, you can't, you can't have missed this if, unless you have really not been paying attention to anything in, in the media or the news in the last, you know, four or five days since we're recording this. Um, But, you know, I, I, concerned it's it's not enough that most people are going to need to get to the brink of on their own or to their own brink to move their belief enough to say hmm maybe i should you know give this vaccine a second thought correct correct so 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 this is a great a great place to talk and what was that and and that quote you know, verbatim is it's only at the brink that people find the will to change only at the precipice. Do we evolve now as I read it in, in, in triplets, a lot of times when you read sentences in triplets, it can, it can, it can really change the sentence. It's, it's the, you know, it's, you know, it's only, you know, on the brink. See, it's the, when the person is going, I, I cannot end my life like this. I cannot keep believing in this way. It's too much to hold on to this. I have to let this go. I have to let this go. It is eating up my time. It is eating up this time. I'm, uh, I, I've got to value my life. I've got to value myself. And, and sometimes it takes a sentence like that. Sometimes it takes the illness, like what he's going through. Sometimes it's a cartoon. Like I saw, it, I saw a cartoon recently and it's a little boy looking at his mom and goes, mom, what's that sore on your, on your arm? What's that? What's that sore on there? Oh, that's, that's where I got my smallpox vaccine. Well, why don't I have it? Because it worked. See, it's the sacrifice of getting the vaccine to not let the virus have an opportunity to go into somebody else that prevents that kid from getting that vaccine and having that things and the vaccines have improved and you know so on and so forth and 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 people do have adverse reactions to vaccines that's also a part of the mix because when you're making something for all the different human beings on the planet everybody's genetic and makeup and different people's physiology take it differently and so you and that's another part of our belief structure is unless it's a hundred percent, it's all not valid. That particular belief right now is the one that is running a lot of the show. Well, it's not FDA approved. It's like, do you really need a validation from the FDA to it's know really, that it's working. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this in a recent well, episode that, you know, literally since February in Texas, the all, almost all of the deaths of COVID-19 and all of the hospitalizations are from people that are unvaccinated, people that right. are vaccinated. There was only like 47 people out of 9,000 who, you know, got COVID and were, were hospitalized or, or, or died. Uh, and, and so we talked about that before. It's just like the, the evidence now, I mean, honestly, America and the world in many ways, but America is the best drug trial right now that's ever existed for a drug because you've never had such a large sample size. Such a sample size. For a drug. A, right. a vaccine in this case that's, that's correct so so and and i'm gonna say this is it's so unsettling too and it's and a cartoon can make a difference in uh when 
the antitrust laws were coming up, there was a cartoon that said the robber barons, and it had a picture of all Carnegie and all those guys, all those different folks. These are all the robber barons. And these were all this picture of all these rich people. And they were, you know, puppetizing everybody else. And, and they call them a robber baron. Why does that term not work today? And the reason why it would work in the early 1900s, the reason why it would work there is because the word baron was commonly used to talk about European royalty. That's a baron over there. Oh, a baron. Oh, this is a robber baron. Oh, we don't want one of those. <laughs> now, today, people like robber baron. What's that? I mean, what's, they, they, they don't if know what you a baron to, is. If you need to explain what it is, it's not going to have the impact, right? It, it it really really doesn't it has to be in alignment with the belief and uh the mindset of the person and then and then it'll tend to go better so yeah it's it's really a it's really important time to see what is going to make the uh the impact and how does truth how can truth wiggle its way out you know and and get up in front of uh, this because uh, the the big part that people don't get about science is you got to measure it, and if it doesn't measure, it's it's not real, and even that is really tough for people to hear sometimes that science has certain constructs around it that doesn't allow for wiggly thinking. You've got to do it, and then somebody has to, else has to replicate what you've what you said and what you, your hypothesis and your experiment to prove to prove the thing. Somebody else has got to be able to replicate your experiment, and then that's called a peer review. It's not an opinion. <laughs> it's not. No, a, it's a part of the process that is required to prove that. <laughs> What you did is in fact true. That's right. That's right. This is, this is, I followed your procedures and I got the same results you did, you know, and that's something the government doesn't fund. No, no. Each individual, that's dr- a new drug, each that's individual drug company has to do that right. and present their findings to the government. Right. And they were, yeah, yeah. There's a whole yeah, process yeah. there. Oh that's my a whole goodness. process there. That's another rabbit hole. Yes. It really, really is. This but, has been a really great discussion about the railroad uh, switching of our mindset is that what's going to take us, what is it going to take to get back on the course? We've, we've got the, you know, the 50% that's kind of like over here. And then we got the other 50% that's sitting out, you know, sitting uh, where they are. There's, uh, there's always going to be that 20% that says, uh, don't tell me what to do and don't take away my rights. And um, oh there's my, be that group, right? So let me let me leave you with one last thing of irony here, Bill. And yes. and this this is a hot button subject. We're not going to talk about it today. I think it's a subject for another day. But I heard on the news last night because more states are talking about requiring vaccines for certain kinds of workers, state employees state health workers. And if in, in some of them are requiring vaccines or a weekly COVID test, you know, if you're going to stay in your job. And so a man was unhappy about this. The news right. filmed him and this man said, what happened to my body? My choice, like getting all upset. What happened to my body? My choice. And I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah, from your lips to just about every woman's ears who doesn't want the government to tell her what to do with her body. I mean, whoa. So anyway, that's very, very, very very troublesome to uh, to deal with um, conflating beliefs and mindsets and messages and um, and those kinds of things. It's very, very difficult. We we do have a lot of work to do about the relationship between the collective good and individual rights. It's like those two things, Tom, are, and I'm really glad you brought it up because those are the two things. Here's an individual's rights and here's the collective good. 
which one are you going to pick? With a pandemic, probably good idea to pr protect, uh, pick the collective good. With certain things, it's you may want to go with individual rights and choices. You want to live that way. That's the way you want to experience it. Other people might not like it, but that's your choice and that's your body and that's it. But guess what? If it's affecting the, the public good, then, that, then that's problematic because now your choice is and can uh, um, be uh, have a great impact on others. And that's, uh, that's not something that we can do as a growing society. Can't do that one. Right. And it, to me, it sort of makes it hard for that guy who, if he were a proponent of, you know, um, life as it is in terms of abortion, that he would say, no, no, you, you can't have control over your own body because of my religious belief or whatever it is, you know, the, about life being certain thing. Well, but now you won't accept us as a society needing you to have a vaccine to save the greater good of society. I mean, that's a very hard circle to square. It, it really is the, the the tension of the opposites is very very clear and 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 I and I appreciate that and I think that there needs to be empathy towards the individual rights or the independence and the the choice of an individual and uh, that the, from time to time we've got to choose between those two things and and it does become very very difficult for us human beings because there's a there's a loss in it. I, 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 I'm not able to get my self-worth, my identity, uh, my, my choice, because uh, it's going to impact others. And that's, uh, we're doing the greater good versus the individual's uh, rights, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. Okay, Bill. All right, Tom, good, good discussion. And uh, thanks everybody for listening. Thank you for listening to this Purchasing Truth podcast. We trust that you have enjoyed this engaging and thought-provoking conversation. Our hope is that you've received value, found clarity, and broadened your truth perspective in this episode. If you did, leave us a review or visit our website, purchasingtruth.com. Join us again for another informative and content-rich discussion here at the Purchasing Truth Podcast. Don't just accept whatever information comes your way. Join the discussion. Discover your own voice. Purchase your own truth.